magician, fortune teller, you know the whole thing. This was who? According to them, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why? Because he was calling them to what? Tawheed. Their desires were not really cool with Tawheed. There was no room for Tawheed, so now they had to come up with stuff. So much so, that at the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when someone became a Muslim, they would say, Saba'a. Saba'a Umar. You know what Saba'a mean? He deviated. And they called the Muslimin, Deenu Sabi'in. The religion of the deviants. And we were called Subat. Subat with the ta. They used, to, the, the Kuffar, whenever someone become a Muslim, they say, oh, he's just gone astray. He just went astray. Not that Allah guided him. They considered that they were in, in guidance, and when you become a Muslim, you go astray. Now what am I aiming at here? You may be wondering, what are you giving us a history lesson here? No, no, no. I'm trying to prove a point. Whenever the people of desires and innovations and, and uh, misguidance, whenever they are confronted with the truth, and they intend on rejecting it, they create labels. They create names. That will scare the people away. Be careful. These are such and such. Don't go there in order to mislead the common people and they will not find their way to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember this. This is equality. This is equality. This is a lesson which we learn. And what does that tell us concerning now? Why is this related to the topic? Because in our last discussion on the Sufis, we mentioned many of their deviant ways. Many of them. And when they were confronted with the truth, they had to do the same way the kuffar had done. At the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu come up with a name, give him some false, false accusations, and keep the people away from them so that they can contain and keep their followers. They don't want to lose them. So all of a sudden we had Wahhabis. Wahhabi. You know the Wahhabis, right? They don't like the Wahhabis, man. They don't like the Wahhabis. And, you know, I personally, uh, I consider it one of the seven wonders of the world. In fact, I think it's the most wondrous of the seven wonders of the world. How can someone, like Sheikh Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab, rahimahullah ta'ala, who found Muslims worshipping trees, stones, idols, the same way they were at the time of the Quraysh, before the Risala, he found them engaged in the same kind of shirk. He simply called them back to Tawheed. You read his books. Qala Allah wa qala Rasul. Allah said, you know, Abuduni, worship me. Basic stuff. All of a sudden, you know, this is a Wahhabi and he's the creator of a sect and he's misguided. And if you read some of the Sufi sites, I mean, like I mentioned, you go to the Sufi sites, they have a special tab for Wahhabis. Ya akhi, read, read the lies and the fabrications. You won't believe. You won't believe. They accuse him of all kinds of things. Why? Because he was calling them back to Tawheed and they don't want Tawheed. Some of them are so ignorant, right, that they say, Shaykh Lusab ibn Taybiyah was a Wahhabi. And come on, Shaykh Lusab ibn Taybiyah came, you know, 700 years ago. And Shaykh Muhammad al Wahhab came, you know, and he was born here 1111. So how could he be a Wahhabi? How could Ibn Taymiyyah be Wahhabi when Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab came way after him? And the name Wahhabi came because of Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab. Ironically, Abdul Wahhab, the bestower, is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What about Sufi? From Suf, from Wool. Look at the difference in the name. Even Allah made in the name a sign. I mean, they gave us the name. They gave us the name. And we say, listen, if Tawheed is Wahhabism, I'm a Wahhabi. Pull me on Facebook. Pull me on YouTube. Warn against me. And the Muslims who follow this way. We are Wahhabis. If you mean by Wahhabi, someone who likes to worship Allah alone and associate none in worship with Him. We didn't come up with this name. But if this is what you call the people who are upon Tawheed, then let it be. Then let it be. It's better than being called a Sufi or anything else for this matter. We have no problems, man. And we will say it as it is. Now, as much as I wanted to give you a historical background on Sheikh Al-Islam, Muhammad Abdul Wahab, rahimahullah, 
I realized two things. First, you can access this online. Actually, there's a book called The Wahhabi Myth. And everything you need to know about the da'wah and its origin and what happened to the sheikh in his life, all this is available within clicks on the internet. So I'm not going to do that. That's easily accessible. Secondly, if I were to defend him from now until next year, this will make no difference to the people who will insist on following their desires. They will think I'm a crazy person, you know, obsessed with another crazy person. So they will not take my speech as something serious. Oh, just another Wahhabi. Of course he's going to defend the sheikh. So I figured, why don't we address the issues on which we differ? You differed with the Sheikh Muhammad, Sheikh Muhammad Abdul Wahhab, we understand. What did you differ with him on? Let us present this and look at it from the Quran and the Sunnah perspective, then we can judge. If what is correct is with the Wahhabism, you better join and become a Wahhabi without the title. I'm not telling you go out there and call yourself Wahhabi. Again, I'm not trying to call for a sect. I'm saying if this is the name you will give to the people of Tawheed, then Allah al -musta'an. Allah al -musta'an. Not that we want the names to be there, per se. If you don't accept, however, then Allah Azza wa Jal will deal with each and every person on the Day of Judgment. And this is not a light statement that I said at the end. Those who are listening now and in the future, when we say that you're going to reject the da'wah of Tawheed and insist on some shirk, some grave worship, some other stuff, and then Allah will hold you accountable on the Day of Judgment, that's heavy. Very heavy. You don't want to meet Allah with, with your Tawheed, you know, uh, uh, inconsistent. With your Tawheed defected. You don't want to do that. Now you can beat Allah with all kinds of sins. And we shouldn't. But assuming that was the case, if the Tawheed is sound, then we have a chance. But you can meet Allah with a lot of acts of worship based on shirk, they will be of no benefit on the Day of Judgment. Now, when the Sufis and the grave worshippers and all those decided to reject the da'wah of the Shaykh, then obviously they had to find reasons now on which they can reject the da'wah. They need evidence. And sure enough, in one of the saddest, most pathetic attempts in human history, they looked through two narrations from the Prophet ﷺ, which they used them to claim that you really have to be careful of this guy, Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab. You have to be careful of him. This is where the horde of Satan came from. Now let me quote to you the two narrations, so you will know exactly what we are dealing with. The first narration is the narration which was narrated to us by Bukhari. Let me give you the actual wording exactly. Bukhari. The Prophet ﷺ said, O oh Allah, bestow your blessings on our Sham. Sham is the area that is now called Lebanon, Syria, Jordan, Palestine. That, was, that used to be called Bilad al-Sham. O oh Allah, bestow your blessings on our Yemen. Everybody knows Yemen. The people said, O oh Messenger of Allah, and our Najd. Our Najd. And we will see what that means later on. The Prophet ﷺ said, there, meaning in Najd, will occur earthquakes, trials, and tribulations. And from there appears the horn of Satan. So he warned from where? He warned against Najd. He was making dua for Ch Sham and Yemen. They said, include Najd. He said, no. There's going to be problems over there. Right. So they say, okay, Najd is a problem. FYI, Sheikh Muhammad Bahab was from where? From Uyayna, from Najd. Okay, so now this is their first, first point. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That's where the guy's coming from. Then, uh, they continue. Then the other narration which they use is a very interesting narration. It's a Sahih Bukhari as well. Hadith of Abu Sa'id al-Khudri. See, the Prophet